Have you heard the one about the musician who set himself on fire right there on stage? Or maybe you heard the story about how at the end of a show, depressed at the turnout, he put a gun to his head and blew his brains out right there in front of everybody. Both of those and more are rumors about what happened to the 70s folk artist Rodriguez. We're gonna keep up the music theme and this week's episode is Searching for Sugarman on the Everyman Movie Review. Hey everybody, and welcome to yet another episode of the Everyman Movie Review. As I've been opening all of these episodes recently, I hope you and yours are safe and healthy. I hope you're staying inside. Hair, still long over the ears. It's bothering me, I know, it looks terrible. Got the red on my nose, I'm wearing the mask every time I leave the house, along with the gloves, I hope you are too. And I hope those exits are few and far between. Stay at home and stay safe. This week we're gonna be talking about Searching for Sugarman, a movie I know you have no idea about because I had no idea about it. I misspelled something in a Netflix search and stumbled upon a glorious movie. Everyone has an artist that they love that no one else knows. Listen, I work in the music business and I know that this is a fact of life. Every time I go home, everyone is telling me about some new underground secret artist that I should be checking out because they're the next big thing and no one else knows about them. Here's a hint. We already know about them and they're not gonna be the next big thing. But what if I told you that somebody had a secret fan base and it was larger than Elvis in another country. That is the truth of the matter for the 70s folk artist Rodriguez. Searching for Sugar Man is the documentary following the life goal, I guess, of two music fans from South Africa to find out what happened to their favorite artist. So let me give you a little bit of a background. Rodriguez was a folk music artist in the 1970s. In 1970, he paid for an entire album on his own. It was called Cold Fact and it received a warm but somewhat unknown welcome in the United States. But did it garner enough attention that it got him a little bit of a publishing deal and he was able to put out a second album in 1971 called Coming From Reality. And for a certain sect of the beatnik movement, his music really spoke to them and they loved it. But it was a busy time for beatniks and there was a lot of folk music to be listened to. Rodriguez was one of a lot of musicians and he quickly faded from the limelight. He was best known for some rumors that went around about what happened to him because after 1971, no one really heard from him. And there were rumors that he shot himself on stage in front of fans, that lit himself on fire. There were also rumors that if you went to the right place on the right night, an artist would come in in total blackness, lit only from behind in silhouette with a blue or purple light, and they would play songs that would make everyone just remember how amazing the early 70s and late 60s were, and then they'd go off stage and we'd never know who it was. It turns out none of those things were true, but we'll get to that. While he might have gotten a lukewarm reception in the United States, when his albums hit South Africa and the documentarians follow the very, very roundabout path that they get there, it caught on like gangbusters. People were making bootleg copies because you couldn't get the album in South Africa. Now this was South Africa during apartheid and apartheid wasn't just about racial policies, it was about fascist control over every aspect of society, including the music they listened to. Uh, in the documentary, they talk about, I think they call them scratchers. It was albums that you were allowed to play on the radio, but there was a warning on the back. So this is back in the days before anything digital, of course. Everything came on vinyl, the vinyl record. On the back, it would have a listing of all of the tracks. And they actually show one of these South African early 70s copies of this album. And there are a little red marks saying, warning, 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 next to certain tracks. And then there is a no track. The no track wasn't just meaning don't play it and we trust you, because if you looked at the vinyl itself, it was scratched so that that record could not be played on the album itself. You could play any of those songs. Now, maybe they'd think a thing or two about any of those warning songs, but you absolutely could not play the no song. It was scratched off the record. But bootleg copies of Rodriguez's songs were going around behind closed doors and shared amongst the youth. And they were lighting a fire against apartheid and for this free love beatnik movement. But by the mid 90s, most of those beatniks had grown up. Now they were adults with kids and jobs and pensions and everything that comes along with it. All of the stuff that I wish I had, actually. 
But someone did a story in a music magazine in South Africa about someone they remembered named Rodriguez and an album that changed their life forever. And in the midst of that article was a question, I wonder what happened to Rodriguez. Maybe some auspicious investigator will find him, question mark. And that is the start of this documentary. It's about two guys who decided they were gonna go find their favorite artist. They took that question as a call to action and they went out to try and find it. Searching for Sugarman was directed by Malik Benjelu and it was written by Malik Benjelu as well as Steven Siegerman, called Sugarman by his friend, and Craig Bartholomew Stridum. Now those last two guys were music writers, music aficionados, who wanted to find out what happened to their favorite star. And eventually, some years into their search, they found each other. One of the tracks from Cold Facts was a song called Searching for Sugarman. And you know, if you don't know anything about underground culture, Hmm, I don't know how to explain this lately. Um, sugar is exactly what you think it is, and the sugar man is exactly who you think it is. And, you know, early in the morning, maybe after a long night of clubbing, one might go searching for the sugar man. Now, Steven Seegerman uh, apparently really loved that song. They don't get really get into why he identified with that song so much, but uh, apparently his friends started calling him not Seegerman, but Sugarman or Sugar for short, and he still goes by that name today. Now their search happens, of course, in 90 South Africa, which is post-apartheid. It was much easier to get information, but while they're in South Africa, they just can't find any answers. No one seems to know who this mysterious Rodriguez was or what happened to him. And, you know, the internet was burgeoning and they used the internet to try to reach out to people. And about, mm, I don't know, halfway through the documentary, we realized that they put a post on a random, random message board and who should find it but Rodriguez's daughter. And she says, hey, I'm actually Rodriguez's daughter. I'd love to answer any questions you have. Now, they've kind of hidden all along whether or not Rodriguez is alive or which one of these rumors or stories was true about him. And I don't know in that moment that I wasn't just as excited as these two guys to find out the story of Rodriguez. And I have to tell you, I, I was... This is one of those documentaries that, again, is so entertaining that you forget how much time you're watching. It's, I'm along with them on this journey of trying to find out who this guy is. And the music is amazing. It is so good. And I'm not a beatnik, although my hair may say otherwise. And I'm not a hippie. And you know, I miss that whole movement by 20 years or so. But there's just something universal about what his songs were about and the way that he sang them and their simplicity, but their complexity at the same time. So I totally get why they would want to find out the whole backstory behind this. So I was on the edge of my seat as they were on a call with the daughter of Rodriguez about to find out once and for all what happened to their favorite artist. Now I've said in these shorties I'm not gonna do any kind of spoiler, but you know, this one really deserves it. So if you wanna watch Searching for Sugarman and you don't wanna have a spoiler, go ahead and skip down to the end. Uh, the time will be down, down below, and uh, that way you don't have to hear, oh, I wanna give away what happens in the second half of the documentary. But click ahead, because the spoilers are about to start right now. So it turns out, Rodriguez, not dead at all. Never suicided, never burned himself on stage, didn't perform in secret, performed actually pretty, you know, in public about everything. He's alive and he has a whole family. And then we get the amazing backstory of this artist. This guy was a jack of all trades, do what it took to support his family. He was demolishing houses on his own in Detroit. Like, Somebody would give him a job and he'd be like, oh yeah, I can get a crew in here. He would knock down the whole house himself. One of his daughters said they saw him carry down six fridges down a flight of stairs on his back in one day. That is a hell of a guy. And basically he spent his life doing whatever he had to do to support his family. And then at night, that time was his. He'd go out to clubs and play. And, you know, they talk about how in the 70s he got like a little bit of a following club to club, so much so that people would pay him to come play music instead of just having him show up at an open mic. And he got just enough money together to make this album. And they made a bunch of copies and they sold them. And that was great. Uh, but it basically broke even. But then that got someone's attention and they made the second album. And then it kind of flopped. You know, that somebody was left with a bunch of copies. And when it didn't do well in the home of the Beatniks, America, they assumed it's not going to do any well 
It's not going to do well anywhere else. But they did send out copies all over the world, just universal distribution as they tend to do. And yes, it caught on in South Africa. But here's the rub. The dude still lives in the same row house that he's lived in for the last 40 years. Rich and famous? Absolutely not. They do this reveal that Rodriguez is bigger than Elvis. He sold, sold more records in South Africa than Elvis sold on the continent of Africa at the same time. Elvis is still alive in the early 70s, but Rodriguez outsold him in South Africa. And he, I mean, outsold him on the African continent completely. And the dude's living in the same row house that he always lived in. Why? Because someone made bootleg copies and sold them as originals and none of that money went back to him. And I got to tell you, like my day job really started out and the company is still really much focused on making sure artists get paid, making sure that people don't use music without attribution and without paying the artist. No one should make money on your music except you. And, you know, yes, they can run ads on their videos on YouTube if they want, but they got to pay you first or they got to give you a cut of it or else you take it. And this is the kind of story that just, t like, this is what drives me in my day work. The idea that this guy could sell millions and millions of copies of a record and still not have any money, still have nothing left after that, and still continue to work to this day, just doing whatever pickup jobs he can have to support himself, like... It's a shame and it's a sham of a society. But he's always loved music and he still plays. He still plays for his family. He'll still play every now and again. And so what do they do? They organize a national tour, national in this case being South Africa, for Rodriguez. And he sold out arenas. Hundreds of thousands of people come to see him. And, you know, they keep commenting about how like, well, you know, a lot of these people in line were like, it's not him, he's dead. And they're like, you bought a $70 ticket to see an artist and in line, you don't even believe he's there. But the chance that it might be him was enough for your $70. I cannot even comprehend what kind of popularity that might be. But he sells out an arena and they're talking about how everything's getting tuned up and then the bass player starts, his first concert, the bass player starts, I'm just playing the intro and everybody's like getting into it and they're like, all right, well, the music's good, even if it's not Rodriguez. He walks out on stage, grabs the guitar, puts it over his, his uh, head, and he's just like, I'm Rodriguez. And he starts to go into the song, and the place erupts. They have to stop playing for five minutes while these people are screaming and cheering. Again, this guy is living in the same row house that he's lived in his entire life. He has no money at all. And this is the reaction that they're giving him. Just insanity. So he does a national tour in South Africa, sells out every single show. After that, I think that was in 98 or 2002 maybe. After that, he puts out an album that's only in South Africa because that's the one place where he's popular. He goes on a couple other tours. At the end of the documentary, they say, well, no, he's a simple guy. And even though he got paid a lot for these tours, he ended up giving the money away to charities and to people who helped him and his family. One of his daughters actually got married to a South African and still lives there. He's got a South African grandchild. And he loves it, he, but he still wants to live in Detroit. So he still goes back there to the same house. And it's just like, well, that's the kind of guy I want to be famous because nothing will change him. He goes and plays a show in South Africa where they treat him like Elvis at his prime. And then he gets off the plane in Detroit and he's a nobody. And he just goes home. Like, it's amazing. Anyway, by the end of it, you are so wrapped up in the story. You don't want it to end. And that is... That is everything. Uh, but, you know, that just tells me the spoilers are over, so let's go ahead and bring everybody back in. We're going to wrap up this review. Right now. So, yeah, uh, you know, I was saying at the end of the spoiler section, it, this movie enraptures you. You are along on the journey with them to find out what happened to Rodriguez. And at every twist and turn, you're on the edge of the seat. And everything, yes, I felt myself... Like, I want these guys to be successful, not just for them, but for me. I want to know now. And that is really a fantastic documentary. It's the top of the line. So, you know, I would say that, you know, there's a lot of stuff I've been watching in the last couple of weeks that is, you know, not worth it. If you, you know, Let's go through our questions, though. Are you into music? Do you like music at all? You're going to love this. It's about the music industry. It's about music around the world. So definitely, if you're into music, you're going to love it. If you don't like mm, apartheid politics... You know, if that's a touchy subject for you, then you're probably going to be a little on edge. A little bit of triggers for that. But 
otherwise, like, if unless you just hate music, especially if you hate folk music, then other than that, it's for everybody. If you can just stand the folk music, it's an amazing story about an amazing guy who lived an amazing life. And 100% worth it. It literally could be for anyone, and it's child safe. There's nothing, like, really crazy. Like, the way that I did the Sugarman thing at the beginning, it's basically how they do it. Like, everything's a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Hey, kids, you don't know what we're talking about. So I think it's completely safe for anyone of all ages to watch. And in fact, I may actually make my uh, staff watch this at one of our next movie nights because the uh, basically the inspiration for this is why we do what we do. We do this for artists just because of this. Uh, and after you check it out, come back and watch the spoiler section if you didn't and you'll see why. But yeah, Searching for Sugarman gets two big thumbs up for me. 100% worth it. Go ahead and check it out. It is available on Netflix right now. So there you have it. Yet another episode of the Everyman Movie Review in the books. Right at the top here, I want to say thank you, as I always do, to my patrons. I could not do this without you guys. Thank you so much for all the moral support, the messages that you've sent. When you see that yeah, you're watching the videos early when I provide them early, you're watching all the crazy content that doesn't make it anywhere else. That's a huge thing for me. I know it makes me feel like I'm not wasting my time. Like there is a purpose behind everything that I'm doing. So thank you for all your support, including the monetary support. And if you want to be one of the chosen few who gets all of that behind the scenes material, all you have to do is go on over to patreon.com. That's P A T R E O N.com forward slash Robert N cheek for as little as a dollar a month. You get entry level. You get most of the stuff just at that level. And then of course you can donate more and you get access to more and more stuff. I'm wrapping up my self help book. Okay. I'm starting my self help book. Everybody will be mentioned in the forward of that. It's all kinds of bonuses. You can find more details right there at patreon.com forward slash Robert and Cheek. And finally, my home on the web is taking shape. RobertandCheek.com has come back to life. It's only a few pages and it's a work in progress, but you'll be able to start getting information there. You can find links to the videos, links to the books, links to everything that I'm doing, music for whatever that's worth. All of those things are available right there at robertandcheek.com. And in a few weeks, you'll be able to sign up for a mailing list where I'll stay in touch with you and let you know about the bigger stuff I have coming along. We're kicking around some really big projects, maybe even the number one movie in the country. We'll see. But you're going to know first if you go to robertandcheek.com and sign up. And of course, I'm available on social media for free all the time. You get access to what's going on inside here, as terrifying as that may be. Go look for me at Robert N. Cheek on all your social networks. Works. Maybe that's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, Tumblr, Snapchat, everywhere at Robert N. Cheek. The only thing I don't have at this point is an OnlyFans and don't push me because I might go and do it. But there's super funny content. There's insights into what's going on behind the scenes of my life. Not as much as you get at the Patreon, but hey, it's for free and it's right there on social media. So check it out at Robert N. Cheek on all your social networks. And if you can't get enough of me because, ugh, why would you? Make sure that you're checking out the OD Anthem podcast. Every Tuesday, I sit down with my buddy Corey and we do a new podcast, brand new, every single week for 314 consecutive weeks at this point. We talk about news, we talk about politics, we talk about sports, the stories of the day, anything is on the table, you never know what we're going to get into. We tell stories from the past, we just hit our sixth year anniversary. So there's a lot of content for you to check out when you're bored and a new episode every single Tuesday. Go on over to OTheAnthem.com, you can find the entire catalog of back episodes, you can follow us on social media at O the Anthem that's available everywhere and make sure you join us on Sundays or Mondays when we do our live recording you can be part of the show if you're following on social media or at youtube.com forward slash O the Anthem you'll be able to join in right there thank you guys so much for checking out the video if you're watching on YouTube please do like and subscribe to the channel if you subscribe to the channel you get new updates not just of these videos but of all the stuff that I'm working on I got a lot going on right now and you're not going to want to miss a second of it but of course every man movie review is also available in podcast form you can find at anchor.fm forward slash everyman movie reviews you'll be able to check out the new episodes right there at the same time as they're available on youtube with a few bonuses and extras only for the podcast listeners i'll be back again in just a few days with yet another episode so keep a lookout for that but until then please stay safe and stay inside take care of yourself and each other have a great week everybody